I'm Lee Iridium. I hope everyone's doing okay. I've got two well, special guests on me today. One first time round, Dominic McCauley. How you doing, mate? I'm all right. Cool. Excellent. I'm all right. Glad to be here after all this time. Yeah, yeah. So, and Jam as well. He's back uh, for another episode of All Killer, No Filler, Total Frustration. So, um, quick introduction to Dominic. Um, just let us know, mate. Hey, you got into metal. I know you've been with the channel from near enough in the beginning, a bit like Jam has, um, quite a while. So thanks for that. Uh, one of my first subscribers. But let us know how you how you got into metal and how you, well, how you came to be here today, I suppose. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, I'm kind of nostalgic for those early car videos. You know, those are the those are like the <laughs> those are like your uh, your demos that people prefer to the <laughs> to your to your uh, mega budget album. You know, but well, um, well I said that we'll be going back to the car soon because I'm back at work on the first of uh, oh. April. So you see me. Oh, the car. Fun. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I mean, I've always been into rock. I mean, the first thing for me was Kiss, obviously, being an, an American child um now it's my first gig as well kiss love gun tour uh i was 11 years old so you can imagine that's like superheroes coming to life you know so um very good but uh, you know i've always been a i have a wide range of taste of music actually uh, metal's always the one that i'll never give up and, and uh gets me the most excited to talk about probably but i like all kinds of stuff i worked in record stores for about 20 years mm. so when you do that you get exposed to so much and you can't just listen to metal all day or you know mm. you wouldn't have any sort of um uh, customers you know <laughs> just blast the metal all day so i think that, that that contributes to my wide my wide range but as i said uh yeah especially today's topic um be uh, again being an american teenager this was Oh, yeah. the band you know mm. they really were that's great then so i mean we had a bit of a conversation jam didn't we about how people can actually we didn't have the one about how people can like different music but we had one about no. how you can like metal and then how, how you can like metal and not like it it's not like it no yeah it's just yeah for me, it's for people who don't like it in the first place as far as i'm concerned you can't suddenly like it and then not like it you can like other stuff i mean i have I'm not really much for other things. I mean, I like um, I like rock music, so I like Dire Straits, I like Pink Floyd, mm. Stones, things like that. I don't really like anything else. I, I mean, 80s music, obviously, because you grew up with it. It's a bit of chart music you listen to in the 80s, perhaps. Mm. But that's because the charts were proper in them days when you got all sorts of music, so you could sort of appreciate it in England anyway. But, uh, yeah, that, no, don't really uh, hold true. That. That, 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 that's the biggest complaint about modern chart music is that oh, there right. isn't any variety, you know? I mean, we, we always had crap pop. Every era is going to have your, mm. you know, whatever you want to say. Like in the '80s, for us, it was probably like stock ache and water and that kind of stuff. That was just we had no interest in. But then you would have, you know, bring your daughter to the slaughter as a Christmas number one, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, there's just nothing like that. There's no variety whatsoever. It's a perpetual all... shit machine because basically Radio One just plays shit all day. And then all the kids grow up, listen to this shit all day. So that's the only thing that gets in the charts. Mm. It weren't like that back in the 80s and 90s. It isn't for, they shouldn't call it pop music. They just call it whatever shit they play on radio music. It's not, it's not a reflection of popular music, is it? But, go on. It sounds, like, it sounds like a very good, uh, you know, subject for a future show, this. I like this. <laughs> don't, get a, don't get us on a tangent, man. Don't get us on a tangent. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That was my fault, but... Um... I, I find it really unlistenable to tea yeah. today today. But that's there you go. That's just me. You know, it's not obviously not that's not everyone's view. But um so like I said, all killer, no filler, total frustration. So Van Halen. So we we got actually there's a couple of albums that came out from Van Halen. One came out yesterday in 79, Van Halen 2. 79 came yeah. out yesterday's date so that's a big anniversary that's 42 years old Fucking hell, i have to count up i'm terrible and 5150 came out in 86 on today's date but there you go there you so go. that's a big that's a big 35 anniversary there yeah. yeah definitely so good time to do this even though we didn't plan it because of that we we're just trying to find a band to do this with if you like so because a few people in the comments last time, Jam, though, you remember, got a bit confused about the rules of yeah. this um, this actual show. 
Um, <laughs> so it's a bit like, let me explain, it's a bit like getting a best of album. You've got to have an album, a playlist, say. This time we're going for 10 songs. It's a playlist, but you can't have the same song. You can't have two songs off of one album. It's only one off of each album. So you have to have a band that has a lot of albums. And also the track listing of your playlist has to match the tracks of the old album. So if it's if it's your first track, it has to be number one track on one of the albums. Is that is that clear? Do I have to make any more rules? Is that clear enough? It's not clear uh, enough. Now I'm it? confused. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of made, made sense to me right out of the gate, um, yeah. just because I could imagine how difficult it's, it, it would be with somebody with 20 albums, you know? So um, I, I thought you guys did a great job on the main one, actually. Um, <laughs> even picking stuff from the Fear of the Dark and No Prayer, which are two albums that I actually personally really like, um, but tend to get the bad publicity, you know? So mm. I thought you guys did a great job. So it kind of made me excited to try one for a, uh, for another band, you know? I'm, I'm glad you included me, thank you. Mark. And um, well, it's more difficult than, than you think. So if you actually want to have a go at this, it is because you, you end up with half of the songs that you would want anyway, you know, the best song, uh, uh, you know, that you could choose, but there's a lot that are not, because it just has to work out that way. The bigger the catalogue, the easier it would be for a band. Basically, if they had 25 albums, there's more to choose from. Van Halen haven't got an extreme amount of albums. So, you know, nah. it, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. So, without further ado, what we're going to do is we take turns. We're going to go track one to track 10 on our albums or on our playlists. We're going to have Dominic as he's the special guest today. He's going to go first with his track one. Okay. Well, this one I, I, I feel pretty good about. Um, number one is And the Cradle Will Rock from Women and Children First. Um, great opener. It was also the first time I saw them live on that tour as well. So, um, of course, there's lots of contenders for a number one for a Van Halen album, mm. you know, but um, yeah, that, that one worked out where um, it just became number one. And I just, I love that song. I love it from front to back. I think it's just great. It's a great opener. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. I love that song. Absolutely love that song. Some great album. Oh, by the way, before we carry on, Van Hagar or Van Halen or Roth or Hagar, Dominic? I usually say Van Hagar just to make the uh, distinction. No, what I mean is who do you prefer? Sorry. Hagar oh, who or do Roth? I prefer? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's not in it this. There's no contest. It's Roth, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, the ultimate front man. Um, yes. I'm probably Gary Tyrone. No, I'm not. No, no, we're joking. Um, um, no, I, I'd, I'd be Roth because I think, well, obviously, I've got some Hagar stuff. I think they're a bit sort of not as heavy. It's more keyboardy in the in the Hagar period, anyway, for me. Mm -hmm. So I probably would have always gone hey, uh, for David Lee Roth. So. Yeah, no worries. That's the, it's the ultimate Van Halen question, isn't it? It's the one yeah. that's the debate every day. Roth. Roth. Okay. And that's a bit weird for me because Just to make I'm it clear. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, it's a bit weird for me because I'm a really into singers. I'm, you know, anyone knows me, I love a good singer. So, but Roth just, he's perfect. He gets on my fucking nerves a bit, to tell you the truth. I can't watch more than five minutes of him speaking. I've, oh, no, no. <laughs> fucking does my head in. But, you know, <laughs> he puts, you know, in the band and his voice in the end, we know what happened. I don't know what he tries to do when he sings. He does this high thing that just don't bother going high, do you? If you can't no, do it. It sounds like you're it, it sounds like he's strangling your your cat. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's worse. It's fucking worse. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, we veered off a bit there. Great choice, by the way, and the cradle will rock. Love that song. Um, and now Jan. Well, this is easy. And the cradle will rock. Women and children Ooh. first. No way. Uh, nice. yeah, wow. That's yeah, great song. Yeah, well done, awesome. my new friend. Jeez. I told you you got similar taste, didn't I? There you go. So, Wouldn't it be funny if every single one was the same? Yeah. I wonder well, what that was. It's already going to be different. So uh, I've got Mean Street from Fair yeah. Warning. Yeah. That was that that was my net, you know. It, it was yeah. between those two. Yep. I just fucking love that song, man. It's it's so cool. It, it's got such a cool sound to it. You know, it's just I don't know. Roth in it, he's brilliant. 
they're all great. Some great guitar work, obviously. We don't even need to say that, do we? This this album's going to be no, full up. I with think the, we... the guitar in is just outstanding all the way through. Um, that's our number one. They're brilliant choices, by the way. All three of us, I think. So we're on to yeah, number... Main what? Street is a great one because it, it's it, it's kind of dark. You know, people always yeah. talk about how Fair Warning, yeah. when it came out, it had that kind of, it had a different mm. sound. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because of the first few tracks on that that just have that, it's just, you can almost feel the grime, you know, it's just, oh, it's great. The great, great atmosphere that they've created, you know, especially considering the coming from like such a party band, you know, mm. um, really good. Anyway. One of my favorites, one of my favorite albums from them. I haven't actually looked at what's my favorite, but you know, if I had to really delve into the songs, I think that would probably be right up there. Oh, there you go. Right. Okay. Track number two, Dominic. Well, speak of the devil, dirty movies off of mm. Fair Warning. Mm. Always like that song. I love his, I love the, when they would get that atmosphere, like in the mid, you know, take it off, take it all off. It's got the clapping and everything. It's just, it just creates such a great atmosphere. Um, and of course, a lot of these for me personally are just pure nostalgia. I mean, that came out when I was 15. So, you know, it's just one of those that everywhere you went, it was being played and you heard it on the radio, you heard it at your friend's house, you know, it was just one of those all encompassing things. So love it. Great one, mate. Excellent choice. Okay. Jam. Yes. Yeah. Um, going first Hagar from, it's a, obviously a single bit cheesy, I know, but 5150 and it's Why Can't This Be Love? Now, it's um, obviously a very commercial, was a single, but it's, it's played on the radio now. I probably wouldn't play it myself, but every time it comes on, I don't turn it off. I enjoy singing along to it. And it is obviously keyboard driven, pretty much, but it, it's, it's a good song. I like it. Yeah. Right, that's great. What album was Dirty Movies off of? Fair Warning. Fair Warning. Fair Warning, that's right. Yeah, sorry. Just getting confused. Fair Warning. Definitely. Yeah. No, great. I, I actually like Why Can't This Be Love. I know it's it gets a bit of stick sometimes. Probably it's purely because it was a single. It was so yep. different than anything Van Halen had. Well, it weren't completely different. 1984 was edging towards that, wasn't it? Yeah. That right. sort of pop it's metal, if you like, whatever it is, pop rock. Definitely, definitely going towards it. So I don't think it was that much of a different sort of song. But... Good song though, I do like it. I do enjoy it's that. It's no song. Yankee Rose, let's just say that. I definitely no. No, no, I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different matter. That's something different. <laughs> right. For my number two, I'm going to the late the last release, a different kind of truth, which I did actually okay. really like. I thought it was a great album. But this for me was the standout track. It just harkened, and I know a lot of this stuff was old stuff, wasn't it? That they wrote way back when. Um, She's the woman. Just love right. that track. I mean, if I, I, that is my track that I wanted to choose as number two anyway. You know, that I feel that's the best track off of, um, easily off of that uh, album. It's not, I would have added, sorry, I would have had another track in front of it, but that's the best track on the album. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever, but I love that track. Uh, She's the Woman. Definitely could have been off, I don't know, the first three albums. I reckon. Yeah. If, if, if it wasn't for his vocals, you, you know, yeah. he could probably. I mean, he didn't do too bad on the vocals. He didn't do that too no. much of that highs, but live at that time. Fuck. <laughs> I still, to tell you the truth, I still, if I had the chance and the money at the time, I would have seen him on that tour just because. Yeah, I wish I had. I've never seen him before. And two, when you're there, you know, it's just, you're never going to get a chance. We definitely would never get a chance again anyway. We Little did we know what was going to happen, but I would have, I would have gone, you know, bad vocals or not. <laughs> so. I was, I was still quite upset about the whole way they've treated Michael Anthony. Mm. Man, I just think they've just shafted that guy, and he's been with them, yeah, and a really integral part of their sound forever. Mm. Mm. And they just bring in his, you know, nineteen-year-old kid or whatever. And it just the whole thing was just really sour for me, even though Roth is finally back and everything. Um, you know, it's not just all about Eddie and Alex and, you know, so I think he really got the, got yeah. the bad deal with that. But anyway. Without a doubt, mate. Without a doubt. Okay. 
Right, we've got uh, Dominic. That's my track number yeah. three. Track number three is from A Different Kind of Truth. <laughs> okay. And it's You and Your Blues. Yep. I can't say that I love that album. I, I like about half of it. The yeah. songs I like, I do like. Um, and this one in particular is good because he keeps it in the, in the low range. So he's just, he's not doing too many or trying to do too many whoops and yells and stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah. but that raspy boom, thing he's got going on. Yeah. No, cool. I'm, I'll be like you with that album. I like sort of half of it. The first half was quite strong and then it just mm, veered off. But there you go. Yeah. Too much, too many songs and all sometimes, man, on albums these days. It went on a bit too much, I think, that album. But there you go. Right, okay. Jam? You and your blues. Yeah. Yes, um, this is getting a bit uh, scary now. I've got the same song, You and Your Blues. Oh! Um, this is one of the ones I was struggling with, track three. Um, I, I nearly made a mistake. I had Cabo Wabo down, and then I realised it was track four, so I need, nearly made a mistake <laughs> on this one. But, um, yeah, I picked this one. I, I didn't think the album was, for the length of time it took to come out, I thought it was disappointing, most of it. Mm. Be honest, but this song was was one of the one better ones. Yeah, I've gone with that. I think that not a lot of people knew what to expect, did they? It was just going to be, uh, yeah. It came and went. My, sort of. my my expectations were so low that <laughs> it was like, I mean, if if I was just imagining like Sharon era Van Halen backing with like him trying to mm. you know sing over it, I just thought, oh, it's just going to be terrible, but. Um, turned out to be okay. Yeah, that's about, about what you can say. Yeah. Sorry, do they come over here with that, this album? Because I'm sure oh. I would have got, but, but I didn't. Um, you know what? So I don't. I don't know. I didn't hear about it at the time. I didn't. So no. perhaps they didn't. Mind you, that was my past life when I was a miserable bastard. So maybe I wouldn't have even bothered looking to tell you the truth. So there you go. Sure, I would have gone. I'm sure they haven't. <laughs> I was hoping they were going to headline download in sort of 2012 time, but they never did. I was always hoping every year going to be Van Halen, but never was. Yeah, yeah. Well, my my third track is one that I didn't really want. I wouldn't have chosen it as my third track. It's just I was put in a corner, really. So um, thanks for this jam, for this brilliant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if it's off the uh, Hagar, one of the Hagar albums, the OU812 album, and it's AFU naturally wired which isn't bad yeah that was my not, second choice <laughs> yeah it, it's it's not bad at all you know it's it's got that <laughs> sort of feeling like it, it does feel like a, a classic sort of Van Halen song but I try and stay away from the songs where Sammy tries to be too party-ish if I can because yeah. it just doesn't it just doesn't suit him I always go back to that 5150 right at the beginning of that fucking album. Hello, baby, that bit. Just fucking just, I, my head goes in my hands and I just think, oh, don't, just don't do it, please. <laughs> I know, no, I, you know, that's, and well, and then according to the Van Halen brothers, that's ultimately why they let him go was because all of his lyrics were always, you know, mm. They didn't have any sort of depth to them as, as far as they're concerned, you know. Um, but I mean, anyway, that was their excuse at the time. But uh, yeah, some of that, some of that stuff is just too much. Yeah, cringy, a bit cringy. Right. Anyway, okay, that's that's uh, our third track. We're on to track four, Don. I love how how um, enthusiastic you are about some of these leaks. <laughs> now, I don't hate this song, but it's on my ultimate albums list. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, okay, so here's my dip into Van Hagar material is Runaround from For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge. Um, definitely my favorite Van Hagar album. I think it is their strongest. Uh, there's more than like one or two songs I actually like on here. Um, I always thought it would have a, I like that do, 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 do. I like that kind of riff on there. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I had to pick at least three Hagar songs and I don't, I, uh, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that one. I would, I would actually put that on, on my own and not, you know, nice. I'd be happy with it. Good. Okay. Jam, what you got for number um, four? I've man? gone back to the, where it all started. Track number four, Ain't Talking About Love. Great song. Mm -hmm. Probably arguably my favorite Van Halen song, I think. 
and a lot of people's possibly. Even though it's obviously played a lot, it's still a great song. And uh, yeah, just just love it really. I've got that one as well, mate. That's my first choice as well. I wouldn't have had any other track at number four. So That's I ain't talking about love. Fucking love it. Oh wow, cool. Yeah, great song, man. I mean, you like you said, I've heard it. You know, I can't even tell you how many times I've heard it, millions of times. But I, if it, I've got it on my playlist is massive on Spotify. Anyway, so if it comes on in the car, I have got some certain songs that I'll skip and delete later when I get home. That ain't one yeah. of them. I'll, I'll exactly. play that. I'll play that. So I ain't talk about love. Great song, man. That's uh, I number just have four, to say, my favorite part of that song is the outro. It just kills me every time. And he hasn't, Love if it. you think about that song as well, there's no real amazing guitar solo on that one. It's not, just, no. a, he just follows a certain melody, you know, and, but just a great song. I mean, just the, just that opening. Wow. It's just like, fuck. Yeah, that's this is iconic. Yeah, they, they even done a brilliant dance remix mix of that a few years ago. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> no, they did. Some fucking idiot went and done that riff over a dance song. It was just fuck off. Anyway, oh, no. There you go. Anyway. Oh, that that sounds terrible enough for me to have to Google once we're done here. Yes, have a look. Have a look, mate. Have a look. Listen. Right. Okay. We're at track number five. Don't okay. Know. What you got? Track number five is uh, this is one I had to put on because I had to put on one from every Roth album. And 1984 is not my favorite, but I love Drop Dead Legs. So that is number five. Nice. Just think that's a great riff. Um, yeah. And, and it's the closest probably to a classic Van Halen sound for me on that album. There's no keyboards or anything. It's just pure riff and roll, you know? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Bit of a jam at the end there. I know in there that, that that's just a basic a jam from Eddie Van Halen. Just yep. for quite a while. Yeah, that's good. Okay. What you got, Jam? Um, I think my four, five, and six are definitely my strongest songs and uh I would have put these on any album anyway if I was doing a compilation or a playlist. But number five from Fair Warning is Unchained. Great. Song. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But it, it's probably only, yeah, this is probably the favorite song on the album, definitely. I mean, it's a, such a strong song. I'm surprised, I'm surprised they put it so high up in the play, in the in the running order. I thought it perhaps even could have opened with this song, but uh, yeah. no, great song. But uh, yeah, that's my number five. It's good, mate. Well, I'm. Um... Got the same one as you, Dom. I've got Drop Dead Legs. All right. Yeah, love Excellent. it. Love the riff going over that. Um, you are right. It's like one of the more heavier, earlier type songs. You know, um, always love that song. It's right up there in my best Van Halen songs. I do actually love 1984. It might be my age. I don't know. I think, you know, 14 years old. I just it didn't. I didn't stop playing that album all the way through the 80s and then even now yeah. so it does depend a lot than it what well, when you first got into the band or when you how old you was oh, yeah. and all that like you said I mean, the, about the, Iron Maiden Fear of the Dark and that is one of your you know it's strange in it because it just depends yeah. what age you are and stuff like that as well yeah well I mean there was a lot of controversy obviously when that album came out because Jump was just all keyboards basically mm -hmm. until it gets to a guitar solo so that was really like I know that created a lot of tension in the band. I think that probably in the end why Roth left um, was was because they were getting so keyboard heavy. Mm. And at, at, as he rightly said, supposedly he said to him, he's like, nobody wants to hear you play keyboards. You're the best guitarist in the world. <laughs> and you've just revolutionized guitar playing. And here you are. Like, no, no one wants to hear that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But um, it's a bit of a strange. You're right there, though. It's a strange opening. You get that little 1984 fucking bit at the beginning, the, the, the intro, then straight into another load of keyboards. You, yeah, you're right. I mean, they could have chosen, you know, Panama would have been the, probably the perfect song to open with. But there yeah. you go. We'll get on to that later. So, okay, cool. So, number six, we're up to, uh, yeah, number six, track six. Yeah, number six. Um... I wouldn't say it's my favorite song on the album, but just the way these things go, I've got Jamie's Crying from the 
first album. This was a huge radio staple in the city that I lived in, if you can believe it or not. Um, so, I mean, that would, you would just hear that all the time. Mm. Um, got, got kind of a bit sick of it, probably, but I, I can hear it now and still recognize that it's a great song. I like that song. I love that song. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Jam. Um, it's an easy one. Uh, from 1984, Hot for Teacher. Great song. I mean, obviously, drums at the start and then goes straight into the riff. And it's obviously, video is brilliant for this. Um, it's... Yeah, yeah, I mean, when I first heard 84, I think obviously I was into Jump. I mean, I was only quite young and I thought it was brilliant. But as you listen to the album more, you get into the, to the other songs like Panama, as you say. I think Hot Fatigue is possibly my favourite song on the album, I think. So I'm quite pleased it was at number six. I don't know about you, when I was younger, I didn't know what the... When I first heard that song, I didn't know what the fuck that was at the beginning. I didn't think it was drums. I didn't know what it was. It was such a strange sound. I suppose the sound of his drums altogether were different, weren't they? Yeah. Than anyone else. Oh, yeah. You know, when that, that first little, I thought, what the fuck is that? Until it actually went into the proper. <laughs> and like I said, only 14, didn't know what the fuck was going on back then, but there you go. So, um, <laughs> so I'll, right, for my number six, I actually quite like this song. It's off a Hagar album, but I like where it's landed, actually. It's, I wouldn't have chosen this as my number six, you know, the actual, if I had a choice, but I like this best of both worlds from 5150. So I think it's definitely one of the better, rockier tracks than... Yeah, I think I think most people would probably say that from that album, that that was the, one, of the, one of the standout ones for sure. Oh, for sure, yeah, definitely. So I do like that song. Um, you know, I, I'd actually like the, the album. I thought, for me, it's probably just the amount of times I did get it back way back then when it first came out. I remember being quite disappointed and I didn't get another Hagar album after that. I only had that one. Um, yeah. So that's my most well-known album. You know, I've had to basically go back because of this show and listen to the uh, the rest of the Hagar albums, which I weren't happy about. But <laughs> <laughs> did you give? Uh, did Did you go back and listen to the Sharon album? No, no. I've heard that once, and I just know I just didn't bother. No. I actually did, and it's shockingly bad. It just yeah. is. It, I mean, it's it's its reputation is is bang on correct, <laughs> and it's not Sharon's, and and it's not Sharon's fault. That's no. the thing. No, he had no no input into that record at all. You can tell he's just singing somebody else's hummed, you know, melody lined and trying to make a song out of it. But mm -hmm. I think that their ego was so high by that time that when he. I was actually I was actually happy when they announced him because mm -hmm. I do like Extreme and I think he's a great frontman. And I thought it might be a kind of a throwback to more guitar oriented because Extreme basically were a Van Halen very inspired mm -hmm. band. Uh, Nuno Bedencourt obviously is a big Van Halen fan, you can tell. Um, so I was really excited when they when they got him, but then it just was. I Nothing just think, like it. I think they were heading that way anyway. I mean, even though like they went a bit more, so you say, commercial in fifty one fifty, I think they quickly lost their hooks as a band. I mean, even when when they were with Roth, even though it was more like people would say more of a, more of a party band, a jammy sort of band, but they always had great choruses that would get you immediately. And they never they seem to have lost that with Hagar as well. You know, you listen to them, mm -hmm. they them songs come and go without any memorability at all and i think that just carried on with the sharon one as well I yeah again. although though I, do, I do have to say i saw that tour and it was amazing one of the best times i've ever seen van halen was with sharon really they were just having the time of their lives didn't seem like they 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 cared they were just smiling and jumping around and just having a having a hell of a time so the, the record was crap but the tour i thought was absolutely great there you go cool Okay, okay, we're uh, that's just I'll just finish my number six, didn't I? So, number seven, number seven, I have finished what you started, and that's from OI81 OU812. I like that one, it's kind of a we can't, I guess, it, I guess he is playing the acoustic on. Um, I just like that riff, yeah. That's a nice, it's a nice Hagar era yeah. tune. Yeah. 
There were some good songs. <laughs> there were some that, you know, we, we, we didn't hate, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, Jam. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, we've just been discussing that. I've actually gone for a Gary Tyrone one from Van Henry, 1998. Um, probably, I don't know if it's a lead single, but certainly, I think it was a single anyway, but I've heard it a lot on the radio, and it's actually, I mean, I like Gary Tyrone as well. From I, I like it stream. I thought they're really good. I saw them singing a few times. So I've gone for Fire in the Hold, which, um, you know, you see, it's quite a good song. Play it quite often on the radio, and it's, I think it's Lethal Weapon 4 or something, or 5, or... I don't know how many of them they made, but it's definitely got them, them clips in the video for it. But um, yeah, I mean, I was struggling by number seven. So, uh, but it was a, yeah, reasonably, I'm reasonably pleased with that song. I quite like it. So, that's what I, I suppose, I suppose some of it is just they built up such a, this is Van Allen built up, even it was hard for Hagar as well. They built up such a sound and yeah. everyone knew them as this classic. It's like when a singer takes, any singer takes over, you just get used to that singer don't you i mean it's just like if you talk about sabbath you know you talk about dio taking over from from ozzy who's the better singer you know but people just can't let go of ozzy because he was with them and he's the classic sound of sabbath yeah it's just one of those things right? it doesn't matter who fucking takes over does it you never get there's a... very few <laughs> fans that get away with it I mean, there can't be many maiden fans who would rather have paul diano especially now i mean it depends when they do it if they do it early enough you can sometimes get away with it i'm trying i can't think of uh any top of my head, but I reckon Dominic might prefer Paul Diana. I don't know if I. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's hard to say because he was only on two albums, yeah, exactly. And Dickinson's on twenty-three albums. You know what I mean? So um, it, it, it's hard to say. But I, I, I was surprised when it happened when I first heard <laughs> "Member of the Beast" <laughs> with with his uh, air siren. I was like, "What the hell have they done?" Yeah. I mean, I really love that kind of street, street punky kind of hmm. combination. You know, that that was like the ultimate of like new wave of British heavy metal was that that kind of punk consciousness with hmm. with uh, with a metal, you know, attitude. That, that's I can more understand that with Maiden because, like you said, they've done something completely different. So if you prefer that punkier sort of new, some people just can't handle the operatic, classically trained type voice. They just don't like it, do they? No. So yeah. you know, you can understand that, but. If, if you're trying to do something similar, sometimes people just won't have it. It's just, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, we're, it's me, isn't it? Number seven. So I've got my first choice of this, my number seven. This is my favourite number seven track of all the albums. So I'm quite happy about this. Take Your Whiskey Home. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Roth is funny as fuck on this song. Um, yeah. I just love that song, love the lyrics. I just laugh at it. I just think it's got such a cool sort of riff going through it. Don't James well, look at me. He's number seven, isn't it? About them. No, I'm just Sorry? wondering what that's wrong. Sorry. My, my... <laughs> Sorry, I was looking Jam was like, I thought, oh no, I fucked up here. He's looking no, at no. me like uh, it's from uh, women and children first. <laughs> that's why I was getting confused earlier on, you know, when I said to um to Dom about dirty movies, I thought he'd already chosen one off of. I was trying to pull him on Fair Warning, but it was me that chose Fair Warning. That's why yeah. I was getting a bit. And then I got, all, I got all. It's so fucking confusing this program. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I the program this morning. If I hadn't double checked, I would have been embarrassed. <laughs> no, I, I, that's why I sort of done a, a, a cheeky question to Dominic. But I knew the answer, but I thought we'd already chosen one off for fair warning. I was thinking, and then I looked down and thought, no, that was me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even realise that, that that you were trying to second guess me. I thought yeah. you were just being a... I mean, I, I did check through my list this morning to make sure I hadn't repeated, because I was thinking, oh, I might have repeated, you know, and then I hadn't. I was quite happy about that. But, um, yeah. Then I thought, oh, That's fuck, my... it weren't track seven. I thought, I fucked up here. You got to remember some people as well. We've got to be careful when you invite some Americans on here. They yeah. get different track listings sometimes. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We probably should say obviously we're doing or UK listings from what we know, but I mean it would be quite in their rights to do that. It's a bit cheating if we do it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, we're up to track number eight, eight. and Dominic. Uh, title track from fifty one fifty. Oh, I like that. Um, it's a good, it, it, it's a good song, you know. I, I didn't, I listened to Eat 'em and Smile much more than I listened to Fifty One Fifty. Let me, me tell too. you. Mm. Um, 
but um going back you know that that's actually got a got a pretty good tune hmm. um and, and i like the chorus quite a bit so um again it wouldn't be my first choice but you had to put some hagar in there and that's a good one yeah it's a good choice i like that it's a good song okay what you got jam well this um this is one i struggle with most and it isn't really a song technically but well it is but it's uh, about 40 seconds long i've gone with i'd rather have the main song but little guitars intro from Diver Down. Yeah, it's still a good, yeah, I like it. it is Bit of good. sort of acoustic Spanish guitar type thing, as it shows off his guitar thing. But I mean, Diver Down, I think, is a terrible album. I don't like half the songs on it. And I certainly don't like uh, Pretty Woman. I hate that song anyway. Yeah. And uh, by any any version. I would like to have Dancers Off the Street, because that's a good song. But no, I, I was struggling by, by number eight. So, yeah, Little Guitars intro for me. I hate both of them equally, them, them cover versions. I might even like Dancing in the Street worse. It's, it's oh, fucking hell. I, I, that's another one of the songs they reckon killed Van Halen, wasn't it? Over that, just doing that cover, I reckon they, they had a big row over that. <laughs> I, 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 I hate that song anyway. So. <laughs> okay, I've gone, I've about to go to Hagar on this one, so not, it wouldn't have been my first choice, but The Dream Is Over from Unlaw for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge from the album. Not a bad song actually for them, for that period. One of the, my actually my favourite song off of that album. So I managed to get that in there at least. It's not my favourite track good. eight, but it's one off the album. But all right, okay, we're up to number it's, nine. It's the small victories, isn't it? <laughs> He's on this. Victories. He's definitely on this one. Yeah, fucking. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we are finally to the one song that I built my entire list around. Oh. This was the first one. There was no question it was not going on. I have a couple of the heartbreakers that didn't make the list that we'll talk about later. But this one is my favorite Van Halen song of all time. And it's and it had to be there. And it's Little Guitars off of Diaper Down. Yeah. yeah. Definitely I love stand. that song. Yeah, it's good. I want to play it at my funeral. Oh, I, I, just, I just love it. Yeah. I don't know. Just the melody and... It's just got this kind of nostalgic, like kind of flavor to it. I don't know. It's just, I think it's just magic for me. Just love it. So almost Spanish-y, I know, sort of that guitar. It's a fucking amazing song. A little bit, but that's more in the intro, you know. Yeah. Um, mm. But that, but that, uh, the chorus, the catch as catch, catch yeah. as yeah. catch, catch yeah. anybody. Yeah. I just think it's just fantastic. Yeah. Good one, mate. Excellent choice. Okay. Jam, what you got, mate? Number nine. Number nine and number ten. I was actually quite fairly easy for me, but um, for number nine, I've gone for a Norfolk Carnal, Carnal Knowledge, 1991, and I've gone right now. Yeah. Another, another single, but it was it's really good. It's probably my fa favourite Hagar song, actually, right now. Uh, obviously catchy again, but uh, yeah, I just like it. Really good. It's good song. To it. It's a good song. Well, I managed to get little guitars in for me as well off Diver Down. Ah, cool. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And it's a standout in the... I mean, I, I liked... It was a cover version. There's a couple of tracks I really liked on Diver Down. And most of that, Where Have All The Good Times Gone? I love that song. Um, even though it's a cover version. But Little Guitars yeah. is just amazing. Totally right. It's exactly what you said about it, Dom. Real summer song. You can imagine, like, you know. Yeah. Barbecue. You know, that blaring Absolutely, out, you know, yeah. without a doubt. Really fun. Really love that song. It's great. Okay. And we're on to track 10, the last track of this painful <laughs> exercise. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, Little Guitar is my favourite track of Van Halen. So my favourite album of theirs is Van Halen 2. Mm. Just about every song on that I could have put on this list. Yeah. But... There's not too many tens on any of these albums that I was really quite happy about. So we had to go default to Beautiful Girls off of Van Halen 2. Right one. Okay. What you got, mate? Yeah, on the same Beautiful Girls, Van Halen 2. Hey! I think that's our third, third one we've got the same. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I picked that song pretty quickly. As soon as I saw it was number 10, I went, oh, I'll, I'll have that definitely. So. I knew I struggled with the 10, so Beautiful Girls, great song. Me um, too. Come on! Yes! Really? Here we go, Beautiful Girls, yeah. 
I suppose the bit, Excellent. the trouble is when you go, when you're talking old Van Halen albums, they, they were fucking wankers when they, they put out like nine songs, 28 minutes long, half of them. <laughs> yeah. So like, long albums. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's like half of them probably didn't even have 10 tracks on, you know, but um, I love that song. Another summer song, isn't it? Really fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. I love that song. So that's great, man. We've gone through our, our list. Um, I'm going to mention, like I said to you before we went on the call, I've just got the ones that I would have liked. Like, you know, if it didn't make the top one, my what I'd really liked on that slot. That's what I'm going to do. But it's up to you guys what you do. You can mention as many as you missed out if you like. Uh, if we go to the houses again. Do you want to go here <laughs> <you> again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll go first on the. I'll go first on this one. We we go the opposite. Then I we go jam. Then we go Dominic last. All right. So, Mean Street was my. I wanted that one, so I was happy with that. I wanted Running with the Devil was my number two track. Nobody picked that one. Interestingly enough. Yeah. Obviously, I, if I didn't, if it weren't for the way the program was, I would have done that. Um, Panama was my number third. I don't care how many times I hear that. It just brings up so many man memories for me. I always say this. I mean, that must have been when video jukeboxes were first unleashed in the pubs. I was 14 years old listening to that in the pub, Panama. Fucking amazing. What were you doing in the pub at 14? Oh, we can't over it. Drinking, <laughs> drinking women and all that, you know, unless, trying to get ahead. Um, my number four track was the one I wanted, Ain't Talk About Love. Number five track is what I wanted, Drop Dead, Le Drop Dead Legs. Number six, I had Best of Both Worlds, but I wanted Light Up the Sky. Oh, fucking wanted Light Up the Sky. But there you go, I couldn't have that. My number seven track was what I wanted, Take Your Whiskey Home. Number eight, I had to pick The Dream Is Over. I wanted DOA. Dead or Alive yes. off of Van Halen 2. Again, Van Halen 2 for me, yeah. Yeah. Little Guitars, even though I love that track, I would have preferred to have in a simple rhyme. Great song as well. And that's it. My double track, 10 track was Beautiful Girls. I actually wanted that one. So there you go. <laughs> right. Um, I, Can't I argue have, with any of that. No. Right. Sorry, I've, I've had And the Cradle Would Rock, which I was quite happy with, but I, I could have had Pound Cake, I actually do like. Um, where have all the good times gone? Mean Streets, Running with the Devil. So I think we mentioned most of those. Uh, number two, Can't Stop Loving You, possibly. Um, when It's Love, Jump. Possibly Dance Night Away, or even Eruption, so I had quite a few choices for number two. Three, as you say, Panama, definitely. And Really Got Me, which I do like as a cover song, but it's a, mm. I do like that. And then the others, I was not a lot of choice there. Number seven, I would have had I'll Wait. And that's it, I think. That's all my arms. Nice. Okay, grab a chair, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, so the first one, hands down, my favorite Van Hagar song is Pound Cake. So it would have been nice to have that on there. Um, that's just far and away my favorite track they did with him. Um, of course, Running With The Devil, Mean Street. We all, you know. Uh, for number two, um, the most painful one out of the whole list to leave out is Dance the Night Away. I think that is just a perfect yeah. song front to back. Uh, just just amazing. And of course, everybody wants some off of Wounded Children first. Um, number three, Somebody Get Me a Doctor um, would have been my choice, obviously, off of that album, Van Halen 2, that every song is great. Uh, number four, <laughs> For, oh, number four, my other great song off of Diver Down is Secrets, oh, which yeah. is one of their mm. uh, lighter, slower songs. Mm. Kind of in the, another song I love off theirs is uh, Little Dreamer, which is a bit kind of aesthetically the same kind of um, mm. slow tempo, but just has a great feel about it. Love it. Yeah. Uh, um, Five, you know, Unchained would have been nice. Six, again, Light Up the Sky. Uh, seven, another painful one was to leave off Atomic Punk. That's probably my favorite song off of the first album. Um, number eight, Dead or Alive, as you say, DOA. 
nine, I can't really complain, although Little Dreamer and Women in Love off of Van Halen 2 is a another of the slower songs that I just love. Just got a great vibe. And uh, yeah, number 10, there was no other choice. Well, I just realized I fucked up. I put Running with the Devil was, I could have chosen my number two, but that's the first track on an album. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah. This is how much yeah, it confuses me, this fucking program, <laughs> see? I don't know. <laughs> I, I was oh, surprised when you when, when you got back to me so quickly. I thought that didn't really take very long. I'm surprised <laughs> he got he got through this so quickly. Yeah, I mean, after I said that, I did lots of different stuff after that. But did I you? Mean, <laughs> yeah, but running with the devil, I think. Um, I don't think I think I'll put that as obviously to her for some reason. But I would have preferred Mean Street anyway. I think I love Mean Street. Love that song. Yeah, I, I would probably choose Main Street over it as well, but yeah. still, I mean, it's like two great songs. You can't. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for this painful episode, Jam. All right. Can I, can I mention a couple of songs? Yes, of course. Sorry, I, I'll just think it. I don't. You, I'm sure um, Dom's got it, but Van Halen Best of Volume One has got three rough songs on it that came out before. Different kind of truth, I believe, and that well, two of them I really like, "Humans Being" and "Me Wise Magic." Really, really good songs. I'd love to put those on there, but obviously they were 12, 13, 14 on the album, so we couldn't put them on. But uh, they were checked out if you've not heard them. So. I have to, I, I have to, um, I have to correct you. I'm sorry, it's, it's not nice, but um, uh, there's actually two rock songs on there. "Humans Being" is the very last Hagar song they did. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, from the movie Twister. Ah, yeah. There you go. See. Uh, yeah. So, so there's, uh, yeah, the, the the two Ross songs at the end. Yeah. I didn't know that was in Twister. That's just coming. That's just about to come on Netflix for the twentieth time. Or after, uh, <laughs> where is it? On the end, or is it in the middle? Or where's it? Oh, used they probably even play it in the movie. It was just um, a lot of those. A lot of soundtracks mm. don't even have the songs <laughs> over in the movie and vice versa. But it, it was written for that, and in the video, it's you know they got yeah. They're all being blown away by wind and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, the trouble is with the, doing this, I, I love doing this, even though it's so frustrating, is that it's hard to choose bands. Well, one that we all love that have got that bigger catalog. That's the problem, isn't it? And yeah. I don't know about you. I, I, how many bands have you actually stuck by? Just a quick note before we go. All the way through their career, and you know them, you could do this quite easily. There's not many for me. I, I had a big period, like, I know metal weren't at its best, you know, when it came to early 90s, right through to, well, just a few years ago where I left. I know, I've, I've, I've seen some of your best of videos, <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I didn't, um, re, I, didn't, I didn't like, you know, I never felt like, well, yeah, well, no, no, some of it's all right, but uh, I didn't leave metal <laughs> totally, but I sort of, you know, I don't know. But I yeah. find it hard to, to, there's a band where I can easily say to you, oh, I could do this. You know, I, I, it's not that many for me. That's the problem. There is, I could, I could probably do it with Metallica and I'd have to revisit some of those middle albums again. Even I've started looking at, like, sorry, I've, I've started Metallica one anyway, just to, for my own benefit. And I'll have a look at it. Yes, Metallica's good, but they haven't done that many albums, of course. Mm, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that can be sort of good because you don't want to wage. If there's an album you did leave for a while and you want to do this, you don't want to wait through 10 albums you've never heard before. Either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. yeah, yeah, I've, I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, easy. Yeah. Be fairly easy. And Kiss, there's a lot of albums there to choose from, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Aussie, maybe. But yeah. See, so both yeah, of them. Yeah, I, I could do Kiss easily. We said Priest. Mm. Um, ACDC would be a shoe in. Mm. I could have, do. I could probably do Metallica. I could do ACDC at a push. I'll have to listen to a few albums again from that. Yeah, again, I was a big Scott fan, Bon Scott, massive Bon Scott fan. So I could easily do that part. It's when I get after flick of the switch, I'll start to struggle a little bit. I'd have to revisit. Um, and Kiss, I was a non-makeup fan. There you go. I I love it. I I, I, I totally appreciate that. Mm. And I was going to say, after you said that, I think they have like, eight albums in that period so you're already over halfway there yeah this should be fairly easy really yeah so we will do it again we'd have to like have a little conflab 
and see what we can come up with next time. But I have enjoyed you the show. Could, you, you could probably do Queen Strike. Oh, yeah, but man, oh, many, awesome. there's years of shit. <laughs> yeah. There is years of sh- that I, I did listen to once, maybe, and I just thought, what the fuck was this? <laughs> just really wanting my old Queens right back. It never happened, did it, until three albums ago, basically. So, yeah, it's, even that's quite difficult, Queens right. Yeah. You know, there's a lot Alice of... Cooper. Oh, no, I don't, I don't never have liked Alice Cooper. Pearl Jam. Oh, I could do Alice Cooper, absolutely, yep. Yeah. So even Pearl Jam, I couldn't do that after the first two albums. I couldn't do it because uh, I think they were shit and all. So I could do Alice in Chain, but we'd have like a five track. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't I didn't realise how, how many few albums they had. Ones you might get away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're not grunge, by the way, Alice in Chains, Dom, before you mention it. They're, they're, they're metal, right? <laughs> They're metal. They're a metal band. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, hey, guys. Hey, hey Jeff, did, did, did you get to your uh, other tracks that you were going to mention? You mentioned the two off of the best of them. Were you going to mention the the three Hagars from the best of both worlds? Was that where you're going with your thought? No, it was just, it was just them three off that best of volume one or whatever it's called. It was oh, just those right. Three. Okay. Because there were three newer uh, Hagar songs. When they released that double best of, um, which I guess were, would have been in contention too if any of us cared. But, and yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, then, guys. Listen, uh, thanks for coming on. It's been a real pleasure. It's been a laugh as well. I've absolutely loved yeah. it. I, I knew it'd be a laugh. See, it's that British sense of humor, even though Dominic's not British. You still. You <laughs> Just pretend. That's all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks, guys. Um, obviously, all right, man. Yeah, yeah, cool. I mean, anyone want to put comments down the bottom? You know, try and get the rules right if you can. You know, the rules <laughs> that I explained at the beginning. Um, and it's 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 harder than you think. Have a go at it, and uh, we'll be back for another show. I'm sure. Until then, I'll see you next time. Cheers.